Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I have the big brother of the T480, the T580. And this is a really, really beautiful looking machine that sports the full-size keyboard, including the numpad, so none of that space has gone to waste. A lot of the same features and specifications that you find on the T480, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here, are very similar to this one. So there's a lot of great standard features with this machine. So let's dive right into it. You obviously have a 15.6 inch display right here. And this came in two flavors, mainly. It was a 1920 by 1080 250 nit panel that did have a touch option. And this is actually that panel. And it also came in a 3840 by 2160 300 nit panel. So unlike the T480, where you could get the very low resolution 1366 by 768 panel, that was simply not an option at 15.6 inches. I think Lenovo probably understood that with a screen this big, you really start to count the pixels with a resolution that low. CPU flavors were the i5-7200 and 7300, that was an i7 from the previous generation, but most of these were equipped with 8th generation Intel, including the i5-8250U, the i5-8350U, the i7-8850U, and then the i7-8650U. Depending on the CPU, the GPUs were integrated to match, so 7th gen uh, Intel had the Intel HD 620, and then the 8th gen Intel had UHD 620. So if you want the UHD, you then need to go with 8th gen. Also, the NVIDIA GeForce MX150 2GB card was an optional dedicated GPU on these units as well. A few other features that were options were the backlit keyboard, the fingerprint reader, the Think Shutter was standard, and it looks like by a piece of tape that this one from the factory has never been used. And to the person that owned this previously, they, they ever wondered why everything looked slightly green? It's because the tape was still there. Um, but this thing is in immaculate condition. Continuing on with specs, we do have 32 gigabytes of RAM being the maximum. And it was DDR4, 2400 megahertz with two slots. And if you're running the seventh gen Intel, then you would max out at 2133 megahertz. Storage on the inside was a two and a half inch bay or an M.2 2280 NVMe, which is operating at a PCI 3.0 on two lanes. And the WAN slot, when it's not occupied, could also sport a second SSD and it would actually be at the same speed. So that's actually kind of handy to know if you're running a two and a half inch bay, but you're not running a LTE card, you can actually put in a smaller SSD, but not have any less performance other than, of course, the size. Wi-Fi was the Intel AC8265, and that had Bluetooth 4.1, and depending on the operating system, it is actually capable of 4.2, but on the spec sheet, lists 4.1. This, of course, has the fantastic battery bridge technology, which means that there is an optional uh, integrated battery inside the machine, as well as the battery slot at the rear. The integrated battery was a 3-cell 32-watt hour. This is the 3-cell 24-watt hour, but you could also get two 6-cell variants with either 48 or 72-watt hours, respectively. As you know, I am a huge fan of the battery bridge technology. I just think that it's a really cool idea. While we're looking at the bottom of the machine, we can see a few other things like the two downward firing speaker grills, and unfortunately, no dock connector. That was replaced with the one on the side. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk about ports. Over here, we have the smart card, the exhaust fan for the CPU, the Thunderbolt 3 slash hybrid dock thing that Lenovo's got going on now. It's just not as satisfying, but it's still pretty cool. And then USB Type-C charging. Along the back, we have absolutely nothing. And then down the right-hand side, we have the Kensington lock slot. We have the Ethernet. We have HDMI, two USB 3.0, one always on. 
the full size SD card slot and then the headphone microphone combo jack. And as you can see, this is a very thin device for its size category. And if I were to ever carry a 15 inch laptop ever again, this would probably be one of the main contenders because even though it is a big screen, it just feels nice. They have that really good weight to body ratio balanced very, very well. And I don't think that this would be unwelcome in pretty much any backpack uh, around a campus or a workplace. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and crack this thing open and take a look at the insides. To do this, we are going to need our standard and trusty Phillips screwdriver, and we will turn the device over. It is worth noting that if it has battery bridge technology that you are going to want to go ahead and disable the internal battery through the BIOS, which I've done earlier. As you can see, this is a very anemic little battery slice. It's cute, but I would probably want something bigger if this was my machine. Gaining access is quite trivial. We spin the screws out until they spin no more. This particular model doesn't seem to necessarily uh, click when the screws hit their threshold, but that's okay. And because of its size, it does have a fair amount of screws on the bottom just to cover that extra surface area. Okay, with all of those screws out of the way, I'm just going to grab the plastic around the ports and then pull gently, working my way around. Being very careful with this thin piece, of course, along the back of the battery compartment. I think one of the clips over here decided to hold on a bit. Ah, uh, there we go. All right, so on the inside of this big, beautiful beast, we have all sorts of things staring us in the face. So the first thing that we've got here is the SSD bay. And this, while this comes with the two and a half inch caddy, and as we can see, it has the SSD, the M.2, adapter already built in with a nice little shield over top to help with heat dissipation, which is pretty cool. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could remove that and swap it out for the other adapter, but this is quite sufficient. Undoing these two screws would lift this cover off. Removing that screw, of course, would release the 2280 sized SSD. And it's just a simple matter of pivoting that back into place. And it is just a friction fit. We do have one of our RAM slots located here, and the other one is vacant. We see the internal battery option, of course, has been taken here, as well as our two downward firing speakers, which are not symmetrical. This guy on the right is quite small, and then this one over here is significantly larger, or at least it would appear to be significantly larger. We see our cooling solution here is pulling heat from the center of the machine, with a single heat pipe and blowing it out the side. Other things to note is that if you had LTE, that's where the SIM card would go. Our Wi-Fi card is located over here, CMOS battery here, and then here is where the LTE option would go if it was equipped on this machine. It is not, however, a shorter, I believe 2242 sized drive will fit there quite nicely and work just as well as the one that we would see located over here. Other than that, that is pretty much everything for the inside of the machine here. If you wanted to disassemble it any further, you're removing all the screws and pulling the battery out, speakers, board, the whole nine yards. Obviously, reassembly is the reversal of disassembly. Put the cover back on, tighten down all the screws, and away we go. So with that being said, let me go ahead and do that. Let's look at some boot times and draw some final conclusions on the TV 580. All right, with everything back together, let's open this up and turn it on.
as you can see, we're running Windows 11 and the boot time is quite good. And we have a delicious looking touch screen as well. So there's a fair bit to like about this machine and it is uh, going to run Windows 11 no problem. If you're curious, this one is of course running 16 gigs of RAM and the Intel i5-8350U and it is no slouch. Even though it's only the 1080p panel, it's still significantly bright enough for most tasks without being completely overbearing. The dual battery system of course is going to be a huge help in keeping the battery life of this machine up and running. In terms of battery times, depending on how you've got it configured, the 24 watt hour battery alone is about five and a half hours, although that's going to be pretty generous with uh, your use. 48 watt hours at about 12 and a half, 72 watt hours at around 18, and then if you're combining batteries with 32 and 24, that's about 13 hours, which is what this is. 32 and 48 claims 20, and then of course 32 and 72 claims 26. Now, obviously, those are running the machine just barely, but they're all just theoretical maximums. In terms of cost for one of these, they will vary pretty wildly in price because they're only just starting to come off their warranty periods now. They can be as low as anywhere from around 600 Canadian dollars, and they can climb all the way up to around 1,000 Canadian dollars. So as they start to come more and more out of warranty, we'll see the prices drop more and more and more. However, they are a fantastic piece of kit, especially if you need a 15-inch device that has all the processing power that you would need for pretty much any mainstream task in the office, for at work or at school. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the T580. Again, if you want more information about its smaller brother, check out the T480 video. And as always, I'm going to encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I feature another 15-inch laptop, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.